right? Here we are. Um, good afternoon. My name is Olivia Troy. Uh, I am mostly known as a former Trump White House national security official. Uh, I, um, I'm a proud Texan, uh, but I have spent um, the past few decades in Northern Virginia as my home. And I'm glad to be here today alongside fellow Republicans for Harris. Four years ago, I resigned from my role as national security, security official in the Trump administration. As a national security person, a career law intelligence officer, and as someone who started my career in the Republican Party, I dreamed of working in the White House. It was a very hard decision, a life-changing decision, but as an American serving the greater good, it was the right one. I saw how Donald Trump undermined our intelligence community, our military leaders, and ultimately, in the end, our democratic process. He's still doing that today. He's laying the groundwork to undermine this upcoming election. Trump loves to sow doubt and division because it's the only way he wins. He divides us in our communities, wreaks havoc, chaos, creates hate, division. And you know who's watching? Our foreign adversaries. Because that's what they want. Because it's the only way they win. Being inside Trump's White House was terrifying. I spent all four years of the administration watching this administration firsthand. I started my career at DHS under Trump. And then I worked in, with my friends in the White House. There were a lot of things that happened that were concerning. But today, what worries you the most is what happens if he returns back to the Oval Office without the guardrails that he had before. The responsible leaders, the people that served with integrity to try to make a difference, they either resigned or were fired and they won't be back. I grew up in the kind of working class family that Trump pretends to care about. Conservative, Catholic. July 4th was our most sacred holiday. Those values were part of the values that made me a Republican. They're also the values that made me proud to support Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. protecting our individual freedoms. A Trump fan's presidency would be catastrophic here in Virginia, particularly for thousands of civil servants and federal employees, formerly like myself, who would be purged from the federal government. As laid out in their Project 2025 agenda, they want to get rid of anyone not sufficiently loyal and replace them with mega loyalists who will empower him to rule as dictator, as Donald Trump has, himself has said on day one. This threatens the jobs of 140,000 Virginians who serve in the agencies across the federal government, some of which of those agencies are also located in Virginia. Vance has also said, and by the way, I should say this, my neighbor, J.D. Vance, <laughs> has also said before that he wants to fire every civil servant. Those are his words. Virginia's economy would suffer tremendously, and Virginians would lose their jobs, their health care, and their benefits. Trump's Project 2025 plan is astoundingly unpopular in Virginia, thank goodness, but we have the opportunity to choose something better for a better future for all of us. We can choose a leader with integrity, compassion, and a commitment to be a president for all Americans, not just a small sector of the cronies and the people who align with their own personal agenda. Early voting started last Friday here in Virginia. This is our chance to send a message to reasonable Republicans and independents. I know they're out there because I'm talking to them every single day. You can join the record number of Virginians turning out to vote early, and when you do, I hope you'll join me in voting for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. Trump is truly all about himself. Those of us who served on the staff know this firsthand. We lived it. Vice President Harris and Governor Tim Waltz will fight for all of us, regardless of party. She will fight for our democracy, she'll fight to protect it, and she'll fight for our opportunities. 
She's the best person to take our country forward. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce former Congresswoman Barbara Comstock. Thank you, Olivia, and thank you for your courage and, and my colleague on Denver. I know so many of my Republican friends who've been out there on the front lines, it's, it's not been easy. So I'm uh, thrilled to join you today and to be here doing something that as a Virginia Republican who's been, who was active since I came here to go to law school many years ago <laughs> and raised my three children here. And now I'm, I'm live just down the road with two of my grandchildren, uh, two of the other ones who will be returning here shortly from Australia. Uh, but, um, so I have seven in total now. But I really feel like, you know, I'm doing it for them because despite having been, you know, I was a uh, staffer for Congressman Frank Wolf, a great Virginia Republican. I worked on uh, presidential campaigns of uh, George Bush, um, Mitt Romney, also helped out with uh, John McCain. I also served in the Republican administration at the Justice Department with um, John Ashcroft, not somebody who people ever describe as a rhino. Um, took a little grief there, uh, but that was after 9-11. And this year I was a co-chair of Nikki Haley's campaign for president in Virginia, where we were all told um, we were permanently barred from MAGA, which was fine. Thank you, uh, we appreciate that. And uh, so I really didn't leave the Republican Party at all. I was here first. I was here, you know, actually in the 90s when I was working on Capitol Hill, Donald Trump was writing checks to um, Bill Clinton while well, I actually was helping working on impeachment. Sorry for any Democrats here. But that is what <laughs> I did back then. But I was also happy on the, on the two um, Trump impeachments, also supported those. So I have a pretty good record on pro-impeachment. So at any rate, um, but I just refused to go along quietly with the Republican Party when they fall behind an open misogynist who also uh, enables Russian aggression and talks about being a dictator. I mean, I grew up with, I mean, I came to Washington as a law student just loving Ronald Reagan. My family was actually Massachusetts Democrats, and you know, I flipped the other way because I saw you know, somebody who was standing up to a dictator. And you know, we know uh, Putin is, you know, he's former KGB, and you know, Donald Trump may want to write love letters to him, but I was so proud of the vice president when she stood there on that debate stage and said, you know, I, I'm going to stand up to Putin while, you know, he would eat you for lunch. And that's exactly what would happen. You know, I also come from the Republican Party in the 90s where we were all talking about, you know, character matters. Um, we certainly, you know, there, there was actually a book called, you know, about Reagan called When Character Mattered. I think it still does as a Republican. Um, so, you know, Donald Trump did a telephone rally this week to Virginians, and he's still claiming that he won the 2020 election. You know, he can't acknowledge that he lost, you know, four years a sore loser. You know, and I'm sure um, when he loses again and when the vice president will win and uh, be the president, he'll be eight years a loser. But there you go. Um, now, I don't agree with Kamala Harris on everything. But I believe, you know, she's a leader who will protect our democracy, who will stand with our allies, who will stand with President Zelensky and stand with Ukraine, stand against aggression, because these things are all tied together. I just came back from Australia, and they are very concerned about, you know, are we going to stand up, at, you know, for Taiwan, stand up against China? And when you have somebody who's saying, you know, who doesn't understand these things are all tied together, you know, when you stand up against aggression in one place, they get the message elsewhere. So she very clearly, you know, it's ironic for us, for we Republicans, who in the 80s, you know, were told to stand down, Reagan was too aggressive, to now hear uh, the Vice President speak very much in those Reagan tones while Trump wants to, you know, blame America first and attack our country. So if uh, some of that isn't enough for uh, supporting the Vice President, consider this in Virginia, you know, Trump, that Project 2025, what he wants to do. I mean, I spent years both as a staffer for Congressman Wolf and then as a congresswoman fighting for federal employees, 
actually was endorsed by them because I had been a fighter for them. You know, this is part of our whole community here. A third of the economy here comes from not just our federal employees, but our contractors. And just this month, Donald Trump wanted to shut down the government, said shut it down just for fun. He thinks that's somehow going to help him politically. But we know it really harms the lives and the livelihoods of not only our federal employees, and I would often hear from people say, oh, well, they're going to get back pay. But that, I mean, these are people who care about our national security, who are there on the front lines at the FBI, at the DEA, trying to stop fentanyl, and they've got to decide who's an essential worker, who's not. But then also our contractors, they don't get their back pay. So you have many of our small contractors and our mid-sized contractors who get wiped out by these um, you know, shutdowns. And Donald Trump, of course, was the author of the largest government shutdown in history. So that Project 2025, you know, hope you, if you haven't watched the John Oliver takedown on Project 2025, I highly recommend it to you. Share it with your children, share it with your friends. For goodness sake, do share it with Virginia federal employees. Because while it is funny, while you can laugh a lot, Kids don't want to watch some of it. <laughs> it does get, it is very factual, it gets to the point. The convention, of course, also highlighted some of that. Uh, but then you have things like, you know, the Trump's plan to raise tariffs across the board, which would cost families nearly $4,000. Where instead, you know, the Vice President has already talked about how she wants to give families tax breaks on buying their first home. Um, you know, and starting their businesses. And that child tax credit, which I love, because actually tomorrow is the 30th anniversary. Um, now I know, you know, a lot of people, Democrats aren't fans of the contract with America, but I did cut, we didn't get the majority back then. But one of the key things, part of that, which was bipartisan, which I worked on that for Congressman Wolf, we actually stole it from a Democrat uh, working paper. Um, and uh, we took that $500 child tax credit, put it in the contract, doubled it for George Bush, then um, it was in the Trump tax bill, and now it got extended again uh, by the vice president in this administration, and now she wants to extend it again. And a great idea, which I'm just, you know, I wish I had thought of it, but I'm so happy as a grandmother that she's gonna do this, maybe, uh, um, you know, for all those people who are out there who might have more grandchildren or, or are expecting a $6,000 uh, tax credit for the first year of life when we know that is a real expensive transition when you go into it. She also understands child care, which you know does not have to do with tariffs, which Donald Trump is sort of talking about tariffs. When they asked him about child care, moms, you know, child care has nothing to do with tariffs, which would actually cost your families four thousand dollars. Imagine more. briefing that guy, by the way, yeah. <laughs> 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 to have color to this. Imagine having to brief the person that's running the country. Yeah. And no. this is a yeah, yeah, no, I mean, or when he was signing your bills, and even though the bills, you know, my bills that I liked, he'd start describing what it was, and I was like, no, no, that's not what the bill is, but that's what he signed it, and I didn't have it here. Um, but at any rate, um, but then you also have, you know, things like prescription drug prices, or the $35 insulin, which is such a popular thing that he's trying to take credit for it, which of course Trump had nothing to do with. Um, and then, uh, you know, he, he just doesn't stand for freedom. He's only standing for himself. Those dictators that he loves, you know, we love freedom. Republicans love freedom. The Republican Party that I knew and worked for for 40 years in this party, you know, I worked for George Allen for governor. I worked for Bob McDonald, ran for delegate with him, worked for Frank Wolf, knocked on doors in, this, in Northern Virginia for years and years and years before I ran. And so I know, um, you know, his voting is open here now. Um, and you know, so many uh, Republicans who, who fight now against allowing us to vote early and be able to get out there. And we know that makes it easier for everyone to vote early. So please remind your friends that we have 40 more days. Tell them when you talk to them, whether they're doctors, they're nurses, particularly the medical profession, go vote now. You never know who's gonna have an emergency on election day, right? You've gotta do that. And you know, you know, all kinds of people who travel and do things. So we have great laws here in Virginia now where you can vote ahead of time, really plan that vote, and it's open and then, then it'll be right in your neighborhoods pretty soon. But that is a great way you can get out there and bring your friends, bring your friends to the polls. Please bring your friends. And I can tell you, when I came out uh, last month and said I was voting for Vice President Harris, I actually 
hadn't decided when I was going to say it. I knew I was going to vote for her. Didn't know what I was going to say or do, but I just happened to be on TV. And they said, hey, who are you going to vote for? And I said, well, gee, I think I've said it already. But I said it, and that went out there. I heard from two presidents of uh, for, who have been my former Republican president, women's clubs, who called and said, oh, so glad you said that, because I knew I wasn't going to vote for Trump. Now I can do this. And that's what I remind them. Like, this, is, this is somebody who's going to sign that immigration bill that Donald Trump killed and is now harming people on the border. Who's going to give you those child tax credits? Who's going to, you know, like Reagan, stand up to those dictators? So there's a lot there for Republicans to like. Sure, there's going to be things you don't like. Let me tell you, there's a lot more things like democracy that you're going to miss if Donald Trump <laughs> is, uh, is reelected. So I, I really do feel it. Let me remind you, there's uh, three Republicans right now, actually four if you count Mitt Romney, but he's retiring. There's four Republicans in the Senate who aren't supporting Donald Trump. So there's three of them who are going to be there next year. So this is somebody, Vice President Harris, who is going to work across the aisle, who's already going to have allies who didn't want him, you know, uh, no, you know, they, they know the problems they have with him. And so um, this is someone who understands how to work across the aisle. And I've never um, you know, seen you know, kind of the welcoming and bringing people together like this. So uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to visit with you today. And now I get to hand it over to a, another great uh, Virginia colleague, Deborah Riggleman. Actually, be here with Olivia Troy and Barbara Comstock. You're talking about Olivia Troy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I got to follow these two. I mean, fantastic. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Anyhow, my name is Deborah Riggleman. I, I think a lot of you know me. Um, I was actually in the Freedom Caucus, so we got to hear this incredible policy from Barbara Comstock. Wow, we got to hear the incredible behind the scenes in the White House. I get to talk about crazy. So um, that's what they want to be here for. Um, you know, and I hope you guys are okay because I have been referred to as a tool of the Antichrist uh, by the far right now. So if anybody is actually sensitive to that, you might want to leave. So here we go. Um, you know what's amazing? My background, actually, Congressman was sort of just my cover. You know, I think I'm the most successful one term Congressman in history. So, anyhow, so, um, but, you know, my background was actually intelligence. I was Air Force Intelligence, I worked in the National Security Agency, the Office of Secretary of Defense. I did multiple types of data targeting uh, for threat countries, from anything from Russia to China to actual specific terrorist groups in the Middle East. Um, I've had a hell of a life, right? I've had a heck of a life, um, 20 years of that. Um, then my wife decided she wanted to make liquor, so then we, we made whiskey distilleries. Um, she's Irish and Scottish, I'm not gonna stereotype. And so, but what's incredible, she supported me to actually try to run for Congress. This is my first ever elected office when I came into Congress. And I also went into the Freedom Caucus, and you're probably like, what is a guy like that doing at a party like this? Well, let me tell you. Um, being on the January 6th committee was a real eye-opener for me as a technical advisor. You know, when you get to see 35 million lines of data, you get to see all the text messages. You know, it was our team that found the Meadows text messages and the Jenny Thomas text messages, which were completely sane. So, you know, we're the ones who actually found those things. Um, and, you know, when I saw the text messages, when I saw all the emails, when I saw all the data and the proof from the January 6th committee, it's hard as an American who's taken the oath multiple times, whether I was Air Force enlisted, Air Force commissioned, a congressman on the J6 committee, to see that anybody would support a president like this that not only incited the insurrection, but actually identified those people around him who would help him uh, and funded it. If you think about the money that was made, just the grift that happened on Stop the Steal, you're talking about over $250 million raised between November and January when that happened. And as somebody who's dealt in financial crimes, I haven't actually been the one doing the financial crimes, I'm looking at them, um, but actually having looked at financial crimes, um, clandestine financial networks and things like that, you start to get this feeling that maybe, just maybe, there's not a lot of truth to Stop the Steal or any of this stuff. Maybe it's just a money-making venture to mind the ignorant and to propagandize over multiple social media platforms. And now, as somebody who's done data my whole life and done counterterrorism and deployed to multiple areas, it's almost shocking to me that the same people that were part of January 6th are on the author page for Project 2025. So when you're looking at this, look at the author page, if you go look at Project 2025. Look at what they're actually saying, because whatever they're saying to you is much worse behind closed doors. And how do I know that? Because I get to peek behind there. Remember, where I came from, 
and where Barbara and Olivia came from. The other thing too is that as somebody who's a Republican and somebody who, listen, we have daughters and sons. Um, it's just hard for me, anybody who's been found liable for sexual abuse, somebody that's a felon, somebody that's a conspiracy theorist, somebody who helped to incite J6, somebody who's an apologist for Putin, somebody who is immoral, somebody who doesn't understand foreign policy, and somebody who has such a bad connection to the truth should not be President of the United States, and that's why I'm supporting Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh. So I just returned from Ukraine, just got back. Incredible trip, Germany, Poland, Ukraine. So we delivered metal equipment and humanitarian supplies to the front. It was an incredible trip for me. Because the only way you're gonna know is to do, right? And, I, and I'm not gonna sit here, I gotta go there. My last time I was in Eastern Europe was 25 years ago. If you wanna hear that story, that's a lot of bourbon and a lot of crazy. So, <laughs> but, you know, that, so I was there in Ukraine. Here's what's incredible. Why can Kamala Harris and Tim Moss answer questions about Ukraine and Donald Trump can't? The reason he can't, first of all, he doesn't know what he's doing. I would say, I'm not gonna call him a moron, but he's there, right? But I think the other thing that we have is that as somebody who's afraid to cross any of the dictators that he holds in high regard. And I just, for me as a Republican, when, he, when Reagan said tear down this wall, when you have this re Republican hierarchy or this Republican, I would say, this, this line of individuals who always supported the United States and strong in foreign policy, to have somebody who's an apologist for Ukraine and to pick somebody like J.D. Vance, who seems to know, have no idea what's happening foreign policy-wise, for me, as somebody who served in the military, who was a U.S. congressman, who worked at the highest levels in the Pentagon, who did incredible things, I just don't think we can wrap our arms around how dangerous Donald Trump is to our way of life and where we're going right now. So I'm gonna end. I don't know how much more I could say. You know, once you say that you're not gonna vote for a felon, right, somebody found liable for sexual abuse, right, somebody who actually believes J6 was just a walk in the park, somebody who's gonna, said he's gonna pardon J6 individuals, somebody who is a Putin or a dictator apologist, and somebody who chooses awful people around him, where you could have a Mike Flynn as Secretary of Defense, right? You could have a Cash Patel as DNI, a real idiot, right? You can have these individuals that are actually part of the Trump administration. I'm not talking to anybody here now who are Harris Wall supporters. I'm talking to Republicans. You have my permission to vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz because Donald Trump needs to be the end of this experiment in the Republican Party right now. And I think the only way to save the Republican Party is to excise the Trumpist elements from it now so we do have two working parties. So for me, it's pretty data-driven. We can look at metrics. We can look at the polling. We can look at everything. But do you know why I know Donald Trump is losing? You know how I know? He's trying to sell watches today. That tells me everything I need to know. So thank you all very much. Hey, we're Republicans right here for Harris. We're going to vote for Kamala and Tim. Everybody get out. Let's go kick some ass. Thank you very much.